Ask Reddit by Reputation Difficult 9. What started as a good thing until it got too popular and reached the wrong people? Thrifting. It sold bad shirts and picked over fast fashion. Airbnb. It used to be a way for people to cheaply stay in someone's room for a few bucks. Now it's giant corporations vacuuming up every property in an area. Deleted. Quora. Used to be a place where actual experts like scientists answer interesting questions now it's just bad teenage relationship advice. If you want actual expert advice from Quora, you have to pay for it now. I absolutely hate that. I used to have deep discussions on Quora with all different kinds of people. Review writing. Used to be a good metric for how things are, and people used to focus on certain reviewers who had similar interests. Now that everyone and their brother is encouraged to share their shitty opinion and write reviews for everything, it's hard to tell how anything is unless you experience it for yourself. Also most reviews are fake. Since they became a relevant metric for sellers there's a big market for fake reviews and you can't really trust anything anymore. Etsy. It used to be unique handmade goods. Now many sellers buy stuff off AliExpress and mark the price up. Etsy's owners have gotten a free pass on exploiting the shit out of mostly female creators on that site they're mostly in named and media and promote the daylights out of false hopes of success. They charge insane fees and because most women without a university education have no sense of how much their time or efforts or creativity, such as it is, it varies, is worth, they can side our $50 100 a week successful. The Internet yeah we were meant to be a global village by now, sitting around a virtual campfire singing Kambaya. But instead we got echo chambers, tribalism, data harvesting, digital addiction and an acute sense of impending doom. Travel. Instagram has completely changed the character of a lot of travel destinations and attracted people who, were it not for the likes, would be completely uninterested in the destination. Tulum 15 years ago was awesome. I visited not long ago and was like what is this place? Therapy, or at least the language of therapy. Toxic people have cooped at it so that they can control other people. Agreed. When I got out of my last relationship, a couple of my friends would refer to the relationship as toxic when in reality, it was just a plain old relationship that didn't work out. She didn't do anything wrong. Nor did I we just broke up. Today I feel as if anything that isn't perfect is labeled toxic or problematic. Amazon. At least to me, the quick delivery is the only saving grace they still have. Nowadays search is borderline useless, there's cheap Chinese crap everywhere and the reviews are 95% bots or bought. I prefer eBay unless I need something very quickly that can't be bought in store. Search is so broken that it's absolutely bonkers. I can explicitly type the exact product that I want and it won't appear until page 3 of the results. Every product has so many cheap knockoffs that you can never be sure you're getting legitimate product. I'm lucky to receive anything within 2 days even though they have a local distribution center. I used to buy from them almost exclusively, but it's gotten so bad that they are my last choice. I only go to them if I can't find it anywhere else first. Thrifting. I used to be able to afford so many nice outfits, but now every thrift store is picked over by people richer than me. Twitter. Can't tell you the last time I saw a tweet from one of my actual friends. It's mostly corporations and ads now. That's how Instagram is for me. Burning Man. Objectively one of the greatest examples you can give for this. The incel community. Started by a woman as a inviting community for people who couldn't get laid into what the fuck it is today. It's scary how words and institutions come to change completely in meaning and no one remembers how they started off. The internet. Always has reached the wrong people but got far far worse once everyone could access the internet through a phone. 
People say social media ruined the internet but I think phones are the biggest culprit. Something profoundly tragic about how having instant access to vast libraries of legitimate research, the ability to vet credibility in an instant, to evaluate for consensus, to fact check and bring up receipts for any claim a politician might have made the past 2-3 decades or so, all just made ignorant people more destructive. It projects an ominous shadow onto the future no matter how I try to turn it round and see it differently. Craigslist and they let it get that way. For example most apartment listings being scams or spam now. So sad as there's no good replacement. I remember when social media, MySpace, was about connecting with friends, not following influencers and internet celebrities. Self-checkout in stores. Very convenient if you have a couple of items. When it started, it made the lines shorter. Today it doubles the weight in the lines. Stores kept reducing the number of cashies and now you've got two cashies and about 8-16 self-checkouts depending on the size of your store. Everyone uses a self-checkout even those who have too much stuff because the two cashies are either backed up or off doing a different aspect of their job. It's really getting kinda ridiculous. I like self-checkout as much as the next person but there also needs to be enough actual cashies to allow everyone a fast checkout experience. College education. It is not meant to be direct job training, sports training, or a venue for drinking. Plato founded the academy in 387 BC in Athens as a place where young people could gather to ponder the great questions. The other great institutions we think of today, Oxford. Yale, MIT, built around this original inspiration. It was meant to collect promising young people and let them ponder the philosophy of all fields for a year or two and a specific field for a year or two. Now it's just another crappy business. The wrong people go, for the wrong reasons, leave with crippling debt, and a bitterness to education. We were meant to cultivate philosophers, not administrative assistants. Woe is us. It's very strange to me that people think of college as strictly job training now. Even just 20 years ago, it was still theoretically regarded as more than that. Podcasts. Used to be a relatively easy way for specialized interests to get information out. I love podcasts. There's still many interesting, well done, informative podcasts out there. But not everyone who wants to talk actually has something to say. Celebrity podcasts annoy me the most. Like, come on, you're already making millions from your movies, your music career, your book deal, your endorsements. You are now going to milk the podcast market too and get recommended by Spotify and other podcast hosting companies ahead of some regular guy doing the same sort of thing and who actually needs the money. Technically, involuntary celibacy was a term coined by a lesbian to talk about her experiences. It is very different now. Thrift stores. They used to be the place to go for people who are low on income. Then it became trendy, and the prices went up, now it's like any other clothing store. Dating apps. Online dating always sucked. It was always full of scams and weirdos but then Tinder turned it into the dystopian hot or not clown show that old is today. Goth punk counterculture. It doesn't even feel like counterculture anymore. Popular songs used by everyone for every TikTok and Insta reel. Don't even get me started when they speed it up or slow it down 1000 times worse. Also PPL make fun of you if you listen to the song still like you just know it from TikTok like Astronaut in the Ocean is now an NPC song even though my boy turned me onto that when it first came out like a year and a half before TikTok picked it up. Netflix. It was a place for people who wanted to watch good movies that were hard to find at their local video store for cheap. Not to sound elitist, but the late 90s, very early 2000s. The clientele were people who were really into quality movies and an upscale crowd. It was a distribution network for great content. Now, you're paying a lot for Adam Sandler, 
light Korean torture porn, and 17 different cake shows. Now it's a hackneyed movie TV studio. Yeah I miss when Netflix used to have obscure documentaries, art house films, stuff that you just wouldn't see anywhere else. Now it's literally blockbuster. It's mostly popular or light-hearted garbage that's just not good.